Um, welcome back to Cultivating a Creative Life, my channel where I um, talk about all sorts of things creative. I talk about yarn dyeing, gardening, knitting, um, whatever creative thing strikes my fancy. This is just a place where I'm kind of working on cultivating my own creativity and I'm hoping that um, some of what I'm doing might inspire you to pick up a new craft, pick up the craft that you love, um, go outside, put your hands in soil, um, talk to a friend who's a gardener, see if they can help you start a garden, uh, if you could play in their garden. You know, I'm just, that's what this space is all about. Um, today, we are going to be dyeing yarn. Um, so, as a little precursor to all of this, um, I own a small business own a small business. I run a small business on Etsy um, called Inkblot Yarn Co. I will include the tag for the shop down below. I tried to include a link in last the video from last week and it yelled at me and told me that I needed to um, have my channel been active for two months before I can include links, which is kind of annoying. Um, so I'll try to include some kind of a something to direct you there if you'd like to go check it out. But I started dyeing yarn um, as kind of a way to, one, be creative, two, let out a little bit of grad school stress. I started towards the end of my PhD program and I really loved the idea of dyeing yarn with my own inspiration, my own feelings, my own creativity, something that catches my eye, color combos that I, that really like catch me in that moment and then putting them up for other people to buy without labeling them with names, without throwing up inspiration pictures so that you can look at the yarns and say, oh, oh, I see this thing. Oh, this is the feeling this invokes. I want to knit with that or I want to crochet with that. Um, so that's largely what I, that's how I kind of run my yarn dyeing is I dye based on my own inspiration and my own creativity. And I hope that if you are a knitter or a crocheter, or you engage in the fiber arts, that you can look at those yarns and see, let it inspire you, let it, it create something for you without needing the name or the inspiration. Um, it feels just so much so different than the typical, and there's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing wrong with the typical, like here's my inspiration picture, here's what I dyed. Or like, here's a theme based off of like a movie or a TV show or a book, and here's what I dyed. That, I love those kinds of yarns and I love buying them. I mean, I have many that are like that. Um, <laughs> you can probably see Barrett's tail. Um, I love buying yarn like that, but I thought this was so different and would really let people tap into their own creativity and their own inspiration. And so, um, that's kind of what my shop is. Again, it's Inkblot Yarn Co. I'll put it on the screen here. I will also put it in the show notes down below. Um, and you can find me on Instagram at that same handle. Um, I also have my personal Instagram, which is also down below. Um, so come follow me. This I'll be posting about this channel. I post about all sorts of my creative stuff. My dog is drinking water. I'm gonna pause and come back. And Oliver is being annoying. Um, so I'm gonna kind of walk you through what this looks like for an itty bitty tiny little dyer. Um, and I say itty bitty because I dye on one burner in my garage. So I do one pan at a time and it's, it's a very small process here. The things that we are going to dye up today um, I'm not sure exactly how what the quantities are. There will be crinkling. I'm sorry if that bothers your ear holes, um, but all of the yarn is kind of still in its plastic wrapping. Um, so we are gonna dive, these are all minis. These are 7525 Superwash Merino minis, 20 gram minis. So we're gonna dive like a bunch of those today. I had a lot of fun playing with those like a couple months ago. And so we'll see. I kind of wanna, kind of wanna try to do some sock set type things. But then also just dyeing mini sets for the sake of dyeing them. I have so much fun with those. We're also going to, so in the vein of sock sets, we're also going to dye up 7525 Superwash Merino 100 gram fingering weight skeins. And I also have a couple 7525 DK skeins. 
that are left over from a from dyeing previously. So we're gonna dye up all of those. So all of this is gonna get dyed. And then all I'll have left is my in my garage is some 80% merino, 10% nylon, 10% cashmere finger and weight skeins, which I'll dye up at a different time. I don't want to confuse them with my superwash merino finger and weight skeins because they will get confused and then everything will be messy. So the way I typically go about doing this is each of these skeins comes out of this package. Kind of like just do a little shake it out a little bit so that your skein comes unwound. Um, and then I have a crap ton of reusable zip ties. And so I just like get the skein a little bit loose since it's been tied up in that package. And then I put that through there and I just zip it. So I don't zip it too tight cause you don't want whatever the zip ties around. So I'm holding it up so the dog doesn't look the yarn. You don't want the zip tie to be too tight because then this chunk will be white when everything else gets dyed. Um, so when you do this, you want to like keep it fairly loose, but like locked. And then they go in this bucket. So I'm going to zip tie all of these yarns. I think I'm going to do some of these minis I'm going to do in bundles. Um, five skein bundles, so they're 100 grams that would then be potentially five mini skeins if I'm dyeing them all the same if I'm dyeing all of the minis the same color and then I think some of them I'm gonna dye individually because I got some really fun results the last time I did that so I'm going to I'm going to zip tie all of these yarns and I'm just gonna time lapse it like we did the gardening stuff because this stuff takes forever um, and then I'll show you what the next step is going to look like So I made a couple of bundles of minis and then I'm also doing a handful of minis just singular. Um, I did a bundle of four minis to match the four fingering weight skeins that I, the four full fingering weight skeins that I have. And then I did a bundle of five minis so that I can um, maybe dye up another like tonal solid-ish yarn that could potentially be minis to go with other full skeins that are in the shop now. And then I'm gonna dye a bunch of the ones singularly because I tried a kind of cool technique the other day um, when I had dyed minis and I liked it, so we're gonna try it again. And so um, the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna fill up this bucket here with a bunch of water. The way that I learned how to dye yarn is I um, add in give or take three tablespoons of distilled white vinegar per skein of yarn when I'm soaking it. That gives it the acidity it needs for the um, dye to stick. So I dye with acid dyes and I'll show you those once we're in the garage dyeing later. Um, but since I use acid dyes, you need an acid, you need your yarn to be a little acidic. And when I started dyeing, I didn't want to buy citric acid and we buy white vinegar in bulk already um, because we use it to clean my coffee maker. And so I was like, you know what, I'll just use what I have, in, I have in my pantry. And so I still use that. I sometimes use citric acid. I'm playing around with using that and how it changes the way the dye takes compared to what I'm used to. Um, so yeah, so at this point we are going to put in a crap ton of vinegar and we are going to get these soaking. Um, they can soak you kind of just want them to be soaked through. How I learned was you want like two to three hours before you're going to die, um, minimum. But at the same time, I've seen other dyers soak for like an hour. And then you can also just like leave them overnight. I, with it being, it's now around 830. 
I will probably soak these and dye at like noon, one, give or take, depending on where my Saturday takes me. But these can sit for a while and they'll be totally fine. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. And so I have my tub, I convert everything over to cups, and then I have my giant thing of vinegar, like, oh, my water's in the way. My water cup is perpetually in my way. Giant vinegar. Um, so kind of one of the keys to remember is that when you're soaking yarn, you don't want to be like a super, super hot yarn. I usually start mine at like, I don't know, room-ish temperature. Uh, it, you don't want it super hot. I think you can also do it cold that part I'm not entirely sure of, but if you get like super, super hot yarn, you can shock, or super, super hot water, you can shock your yarn and cause it to fill. So I've converted all my tablespoons over to cups. I need like 15 ounces slash almost two cups of vinegar for all of the yarn I'm dyeing, if I did my math right, which that's questionable, but you can't do like too much vinegar and the vinegar smell doesn't stick around after you've dyed the yarn and rinsed it out properly. So I think I'm just going to go for two cups and then I'm going to fill this bad boy up with all of the water. So this is about to go in my sink. We're going to start filling with water, get two cups of vinegar in there. And then this will go sit in the garage until I'm ready to dye later today. And if, any, if anyone is ever wondering what um, my day-to-day -day looks like with this dog. Barry, say hi. Say hi to your friends. Say hello. Oh my goodness, you're such a good boy. Um, no personal space, no personal space ever and sits directly against the back of my legs or in front of my legs, like against my legs in the cabinet, so. In case you're wondering, your yarn that I dye always has the support of the dog. He doesn't get to play with it. And I make sure that I tried my best, I always try my best to make sure that there's like never a dog hair near the yarn, but always supportive. Okay, so I'm going to provide some voice over here um, because I lost the footage explaining the steps I was going to be taking. At this point, I am laying the four fingering weight skeins in the pan together. I sort of just try to flatten them out all next to each other, smush them around a little bit to kind of separate those fibers. As you soak yarn, it sort of wants to cling together. And this way, this nice smushing technique that I do, I'm able to kind of open it up so that as I lay dye down, there's more surface area for the dye to cling onto. So that's kind of the first step of me dyeing my yarn is to figure out how I want to orient my yarn in the pan. This changes dep depending on the skein. These ones, I'm laying them all next to each other and smushing them out and kind of, you know, zhuzhing them around. Others I'll twist, which you'll see later on in the DK weight yarn. Um, sometimes I get annoyed by how they're laying, and so then I have to fix them. It's kind of a process. It's a little tedious, but it works. And so at this point, I am going to start mixing up some dyes. Um, I have my tub that had my yarn, yarn soaking water on the floor there. I don't exactly measure things. Um, I'm fairly certain that that plastic food Tupperware container takes approximately three cups. Oh yes, uh, need respiratory protection. I know that an N95 is not necessarily the best option for yarn dyeing, and a respirator is probably better, um, but some protection is better than none. And I dye like maybe once a month, so I'm not like exposed to it all the time. Um, at this point, I'm trying to figure out which measurement spoon I'm going to be using. I'm pretty sure I might have used an eighth of a teaspoon, 
like I said, I, because I don't write recipes, I sort of measure and I kind of wing it and I come out with colors that I think are pretty nice. At this point, I think I mixed together a couple of dyes. Um, oh yeah, I needed to rinse all my stuff out so that I didn't con cross contaminate too much, too many dyes together in their containers. But I think at this point I mixed together hyacinth and I mixed together plum dandy to get a really nice purple color. Um, and that will be what gets applied to the yarn first. So when I'm dyeing tonal yarns, after mixing up the dye or trying to lay down a tonal base, I typically fold over the fold the top of the yarn down about halfway and I pour in a bunch of the dye, as you can see me doing here. Once I pour in, I don't know, approximately half the container, again, I do not do this to an exact science, I will lay the top of the skeins back down and kind of smush them around in the dye a little and then I'll fold up the bottom half and do the same thing. This way I've got dye on both ends but I'm also not like flopping around, you know, full skeins of wet yarn. And I just kind of do more smushing. Um, that's kind of the primary technique here. As you can see, I don't dye with gloves. <laughs> um, you'll see my dye fingers get worse and worse and worse as these videos go on. So at this point, I'm going to mix up more dye, and I'll be adding that to the yarn as well. And at this point, I mixed up the same combination of Plum Dandy and Hyacinth, so I could layer on top of the yarn the same color that I layered on the bottom of the yarn. So at this point, you can hear my burner um, getting all sorts of excited. What I didn't realize was there was a sticker stuck to the bottom of this pan, um, and so it was kind of making the burner freak out. I am going to start getting ready to add on the next layer, but then realized I needed paper towels. Uh, my dyeing style and process is very chaotic, so I just kind of go with it. So then once I get paper towels, I realize I have no space to do anything. So I try to clean up a little bit, just give myself some room. Um, and at this point, we are going to mix up some sunflower yellow, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite dyes. I just, I love how bright and cheery it is. And so we're going to mix that up in the same way as we did the first batch of dye. And we're going to add that on to the yarn that is currently heating up. And so when you are dyeing yarn, the key is obviously you need your yarn. In this case, I'm using acid dyes because I'm dyeing wool yarn. And you need an acidic, con uh, you need some sort of acidic content to help those dyes stick to your yarn, which is where the white vinegar comes in. And you need heat, which is why this is on a burner and it will heat up to help the yarn kind of soak in all of that dye and get it to really set.
And so at this point, I am contemplating what the heck I'm doing with this yarn. Um, and I sort of decide I'm going to speckle some purple into this skein. Um, yes, I am aware that I did not put my mask back on. Um, I am very hit and miss about actually remembering to do that. So please don't yell at me. I know that I should do better, but uh, it is what it is. And we're going to keep moving forward here. Um, then I realized it was probably a really bad idea to like speckle with my fingers. While I am fine with having dye fingers, I sort of realized that was a dumb idea. So then at this point I started using a spoon to speckle instead because that made much more sense than the way that I was doing it. So we're going to speckle this yarn and we're going to go ahead and let that sit. And it's going to heat up and we'll get it covered so that it can cook all the way through. And so at this point, I started prepping the two DK weight skeins that I would be dyeing up. And this is the method that I was saying. I kind of twist the skeins on themselves. Um, and I think this creates a really fun dye pattern when I do that. And since there are just two skeins, I figured I would play around with it here. And so I go ahead and get those skeins prepped. And so now I pop over to my Etsy shop once I'm done prepping these skeins to figure out what colors I've dyed on DK and which colors I haven't to inform the next steps of my dyeing. Okay, we're back. So I think, so when I looked in the shop, I don't really have any DK skeins that are blue heavy. Um, I have some skeins, which I'm gonna pop a picture up here is my goal. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna try to put a picture here of um, these skeins that I dyed and I love. They're like black and gray with speckles of these really bright colors and that has a lot of blue speckles in it. Um, but other than that, I don't have any blue heavy skeins. So I think what I'm gonna do for these two DK skeins is a Caribbean blue fawn, which is like a light tan. Actually, I might go sand dune instead of fawn. Caribbean blue sand dune with some bright aqua and avocado speckles. That's what we're gonna go for for those. Okay, so we are going to come back to the blue skeins that I dyed up, that I started dying earlier. Lid off, all right. So these are the skeins that are DK weight that I twisted up. Um, as you can see, the water is still fairly blue. It's also, as far as I understand, a big, like a big part of that is because the yarn is so twisted, there's less surface area for the yarn to, or the dye to grab onto. So I'm gonna go ahead and untwist these. So you'll see all these white spots. So what I kind of do is I like to like, I just smoosh it around a little bit and lay it back in here. And I like to try to uncover as much of the white spots as I can. while also not making an entire mess. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of white. So the blue that's on the bottom is gonna soak this in. And I'm also going to go over top with um, another dye. So this is avocado that got mixed into um, the blue container. So there's like a tinge of blue in it. I think it'll be fine. I don't know how these colors are gonna go together. I might hate this. We'll see what happens. I'm just gonna pour it over here. Oh no, this is good. This will be nice. All right. 
and then, you know, how we do with ungloved hands, you know. Give it a little bit of smushing around. So ideally anything that, the water is not hot yet. <laughs> Let me preface. The water is just getting warm and it's not actually hot. Okay. Okay. And then I think I'm gonna follow that up with some sand dune. I don't know if that speckle very well. That might be a splotch. That's okay though. Still working on light handed speckling techniques here. It's not my greatest skill. All right, so we're gonna pop the lid back on this guy and let that soak in. Okay, welcome now to my basement. Here we are. So after you finished dyeing up all of your yarn and it is all soaked enough, um, or it's sat long enough with that combination of your yarn, the water, acid, and the dye and the heat, all of your dye or all of your yarn will do what's called exhausting the dye, which is where it soaks up all the dye and your water is clear. I showed that a little bit earlier in one of the clips when I was ready to flip my yarn over. When you so when you put a dye pan back on and you want to flip it over, one of the things you want to look for is, is your water clear or mostly clear? So this is saying that your yarn soaked up all the dye that you had in that water. That means you're probably ready to go ahead and flip things over. And so once that's done, it's time to rinse your yarn because you don't, you want to make sure, <laughs> my dye hand, it's so good. Um, you want to make sure that there's no like dye particles left on your yarn if you're knitting with yarn and you realize that your fingers are turning colors that usually means that there's dye particles left on the surface of the yarn which means it probably just needed washed more some dyes need rinsed more than other dyes like this purple pop that i'm about to rinse out is going to take me a little while to rinse it um because it's a complicated dye but i'm going to take you off my stand here i don't really want to stop the video and i'm going to will it let me turn you around nope just kidding stopping the video and restarting again so one thing that I always do with my yarns when I've washed them is I put them in um, a tub with wool wash and warm-ish water so that I don't shock them. This is one of those situations where you don't want to go from like really hot water on the burner to really cold water in the sink. So I usually let my skeins cool down off of the burner for a little while until they're like close to room temp. And then I use room temp water from the faucet to rinse them and like room temp water in this tub to let them sit for a minute. Um, I know earlier I had mentioned that the vinegar smell goes away and I want to make sure that for sure the vinegar smell goes away and I do that by using some wool wash. Uh, lately I've been using wool wash bars from um, Tuft Woolens actually. I got that a while ago and then I really liked how it smelled and I realized it's easy to keep down here by the sink to rinse out all of my skeins. And so now that I have rinsed these, soaked these, I'm going to spin them in my salad spinner to get out as much of the um, excess water as I can. Ow, I just tripped, that was pleasant. <laughs> and then I'm going to hang them from this dish rack, or clothes rack. I dropped this one. I'll just hang that guy right back here. That's where he belongs. And then this very glamorous rack is going to dry all the yarn. This is how it works when you're a really, really small dyer and are using all the supplies that you just have in your house. And so this is just the aftermath of my dye day. Um, my dyeing is chaotic and everything's a mess. And these are what my hands look like by the time I'm done. <laughs> and so this is the blue skein that you all saw me dye and this is the skein that had all of those purple colors with the yellow dye that we added on top and the speckles. Um, I am in love with the way that this skein turned out. Hi, so I realized that I didn't have any footage um, at the end of my dye day. You will have seen by now the videos of those couple of skeins that you watched me dye. I dyed a few additional mini skeins um, 
that I didn't show, I didn't have a ton of footage of, and this video was getting a little long to begin with. So I just excluded the dye process for those. It was very similar to the stuff that I was doing already. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to thank you for following along on this dye day. It's chaotic. I don't know if other dyers experience the same kind of chaos that I do when I dye. I think it helps and also doesn't help that I don't write recipes. I don't keep track of what I'm doing. And so it's just sort of wherever the creative and inspirational whims take me at the moment, which sometimes include me speckling directly with my fingers, which was an awful idea. Um, it's two days later, I think maybe one day later, one day later, I died yesterday afternoon. And I mean, at this point, this was the hand that was all different colors. As you can see, we've got a little bit left in my fingernails, but that's it. It fades out pretty fast from your skin. Um, but so I wanted to thank you all for uh, coming along on this dye day journey. I will likely be posting these skeins in my shop over the next couple of days. Um, I got pictures and videos of all of them, but it's now eight o'clock at night on Sunday after daylight savings and I am just tired and don't feel like making Etsy listings. So um, keep an eye on my Instagram, which is the tag at Inkblot Yarn Co. I will post there once I put the skeins up in the Etsy shop. Um, if you have any questions about my process, what I've been doing, how I've been dyeing yarn, um, things I do or don't do. If you're curious about anything, please leave a comment down below. I would love to fill you in on any parts of my process that I might not have shown here. Um, and I think the next video is probably going to be another gardening video. Um, you're watching this, I mean, I'm putting this up probably on Sunday night or Monday morning and Sunday afternoon, I spent a decent amount of time starting a bunch more seeds. And this week I will be planting onions out in the garden. So uh, keep an eye out for another garden day video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.